Okay, so the first thing you might notice here is that when we're looking at music from a monophonic instrument, meaning an instrument that can only typically play one note at a time, it gets a little bit harder to see the chords, right? Because they're not playing chords in what we're used to seeing, like we do on the piano or the grand staff. There's one chord here, which is this one. And, you know, a violin or a cello can play multiple notes at once. Uh, but it's kind of, it's uh, not, I shouldn't say it's rare. It happens a lot. But uh, typically, they're playing one note at a time, most of the time. Um so we have to figure out what is a chord and what is not a chord. What we would do here is let's actually go to continuous view here so that we can really get in here. There we go. So what do we want to call a chord? Let's listen to this first bar and see if we can decide what's a chord. Okay. So what I'm hearing is this whole bar is one chord. Let's just look at the notes really quick. Then we'll go, we're, we'll do a deeper analysis of this. We have D, A, F, right? So we could easily call that uh, a D major triad. That's showing us the key of D major. So D, F, sharp, and A is D major, right? This E we can call a passing tone or even a neighbor tone. And then we have F, A, F, A, all in D, right? So everything in these first two beats is in D major, except for this E, right? If we go to the next two beats, we have the same thing, right? Everything's in D major, except this E. Let's go to the next bar. Now we have D, B, G. Can we make a triad out of that? We can, G, B, G. D would be in thirds. So a G major triad, right? This F, we could either call a neighbor tone or we could actually call it a seventh. It's an F sharp, so it'd be a major seventh. So we'll deal with that in a second. Um, but that shows us that, well, let's go on to here. G, B, G, B, right? So all the notes except for this F, and maybe the F, depending on if we want to call it a seventh or not, is in a G major triad. And then same deal here. So what we're seeing here is every bar has one chord in it. If we took all the notes in the chord and stacked them on top of each other, we would end up, or all the notes in the measure and stack them on top of each other, we would end up with a chord um, with a couple of passing tones. In fact, for this analysis, let's actually do that. So let's go to um, instruments and let's add the right hand of a keyboard underneath this. There we go. Okay. This eight, by the way, means play an octave Usually it means play an octave higher, but um, it should say 8VA or 8VB. VA means an octave higher, VB means an octave lower. I don't know what just 8 by itself means. And it's going for the whole thing. I'm going to get rid of that just to make it easier to read. Let's see if it moved it. Yeah, now we're up an octave. So that meant an octave lower. Um. I'm going to leave it at this higher octave for now because that's actually the way it's written uh, and that gives us more room. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write each chord and I'm going to do it in half notes and then we'll analyze that. It'll be a little easier to see. So if we say our chord here is D, F sharp, A, let's just write D, F sharp, A and then here it's still D, F sharp, A. Oops. So what I'm saying when I do this is that this chord is everything for these first two beats. That's what I'm saying by, by just writing it down. I'm trying to simplify what's happening up here by just writing it in whole notes. We have an E, 
but we're going to call that a neighbor tone here and just leave it out. Okay. So that's how we'll do this analysis. So let's, let's, while we're here, let's call this a one chord because we're probably in the key of D major. So let's say D one. Okay. And we're still on a one chord here. If we go here, let's put in our notes and we're going to call this a G chord, G, B, D. Oops. I want to use half notes. G. And I'm always just going to write these in root position. Or actually, maybe I shouldn't always write them in root position because this very clearly has a D at the bottom. So maybe I should write it like that. Gives us a little chance to practice our inversions, right? So that is going to be, oops, turn my notes off. A, a G chord in the key of D is a four, right? And that's actually going to be a four, six, four. Okay. And then the same chord here. Now, do we want to call this a seventh or not? I'm going to say we don't want to call it a seventh because I don't hear it functioning as a seventh. Um, mainly because of the pattern. Look at this. So we have this, right? That neighbor tone. And that neighbor tone just continues. So I feel like we've established a pattern in this first bar that says this is a neighbor tone, right? Because we went down and back. That is training our ear already to treat this as a passing tone of some kind. So I think I'm already hearing this as a passing tone and not as a major seventh chord. So for now, I'm not saying that that's going to be true for the whole piece, but for now, I'm going to call that still a neighbor tone. And we'll continue on. So I'm going to keep continuing on for the first uh, chunk of the piece. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about chord function. But let's just figure out our chords first. <laughs> 